I'll show you guys the stuff that I bought for my concept piece. This which is like a white cotton drill. So it's just like a plain matte. Uh, cotton. Also bought this, which is white screen printing ink. I usually use fabric paint, but this was like fifteen dollars. When the paint that I buy is this big, and this was ten dollars, and the screen printing ink with this much was fifteen. So it is a little bit different. It's probably a little bit thicker, but I think that this will work really well. Then I also bought boning. Now I bought five meters of it and started over here. I'll explain that in a second. Um, but five meters was not enough so i went back and bought another seven meters of it hopefully that's all that i'm going to need for the garment hopefully i don't have to spend any more money and all of that all together was about eighty dollars i did was cut the cotton drill into long strips big enough to fit the boning in it so the cotton drill is going to be the casing for the boning only because the boning is white but it doesn't look very nice so i'm going to case it in that and then what i've done i've got some prepared I have cased them completely. One is extremely curly, so I just pressed them and steamed them and I've cut all of these. So then I'll show you what I'm doing on my mannequin. What I've gone ahead and done is taped off all of the lines where I want the boning. So this is going to make my cage, I guess I'm calling it. So these pieces here, these are the actual boning pieces. So that's going to sit where that one is. I haven't sewn them yet. That's why they're just kind of sitting here. So that one goes around there. Then this is the waist piece. Obviously, I've just, yeah, I've just thrown them on there so they're not in the right spots. But all of this is exactly where I'm going to do the boning. So I have a sketch of what I'm doing, so I can put that here for you. This is a brief little ex explanation. We've got the boning cage that I'm doing on the outside. I'm then going to make a chiffon dress to go underneath it. And um, I think I'm going to do like a high neck on that. And on the cage, I think I'm going to do some like pieces around the shoulder, maybe above or around here. I'm not really too sure yet. That kind of explains that. We'll see how it turns out. Obviously, I've got no idea what it looks like yet. So all of this is what I've done in week two and week three. I spent week one working on the concept and like my ideas. And then week two, I kind of just confirmed exactly what I wanted to do and started the taping of this and then I went and got all my supplies this week and that is so far what I've gotten done in week three so by the end of week four I want to have the uh, cage completely finished I also want to have a twirl of the underdress done and I also want to have some samples of the painting finished yeah that's a lot to do this week but I kind of started off a little bit slow because I really wasn't sure where I was going with my design avant-garde is not something I'm usually very good at don't like to do big extravagant things I feel like even some people might think that this isn't very like avant-garde but it's the best that I can do <laughs> a lot of the time you see these videos done by like Dior and stuff and they kind of just throw together a dress and you don't really know how long it takes so I think it's kind of cool to document each thing how long it takes and um, obviously I'm not Dior but I'd like to see how long this takes and kind of throw it together and see where it ends up and if it actually ends up looking like my original sketch or if it ends up completely different because that happens sometimes I don't know but we'll just document it all and see how it goes yeah. I'm not actually sure when this is due I think it's around week seven or eight but I need to confirm that because all of the dates have been kind of messed up a little bit by uh all of the corona stuff so um I definitely think that I need to start working a little bit faster all right I'll update you guys when I have a little bit more going on.
Okay, so I went around and marked out the next ones. It's now looking like this. I thought I'd try it on myself, which is quite difficult because it's all pinned, but... Ow, okay. I think it's working quite well. <laughs> At the moment, I went around and did the top one that'll sit up across here, and I did the other one that'll sit around the low hip. The one issue I didn't really think of, though, is that these ones here, so these are the ones that go around the body, these ones go up and down the body. The ones that go around the body are underneath the ones that go up and down the body. But I've come across this issue at the top, that if they're sitting on top, they're not going to have a clean edge. So I could tuck them under and cut them off here, and then they'll have a clean edge, but then me and my, like, I hate when things don't match, so I'm not really sure what I'm going to do about that one. I might just go around and sew this bottom one on first. The other dilemma I have is that I have to fit this underneath my sewing machine. So fitting that underneath the sewing machine is ridiculously hard and annoying, but... And it's, yeah, the stitches aren't exactly as clean and precise as I'd like, but when you have the whole top, like, head part of the machine, there's nowhere for it to go, especially once you get to the middle. There's nowhere to push that stuff. Usually if you're sewing fabric, you just bunch it up. But obviously the bone you can't really bunch up, so I've been trying to curl it up. But that is definitely something that's been a little bit of a struggle. It's also 12.30 now, and I have a meeting with my lecturer at 1.30 just on Zoom. So... I was supposed to have a little bit more of that done, or hopefully, and started on the 12th. So I think what I'm going to do now is grab my chiffon fabric and drape it onto the stand to get a bit of a silhouette. I'm also going to have lunch because I'm stunning. meeting for this week um i don't really have too much to talk to you about because i am still working on the same stuff as last week i just have to obviously continue getting it done i did want to talk to you though about the draping i thought the draping the dress would be quite um like a good way to do it quite easy but it wasn't looking the way i wanted it to so she drew me a little quick sketch what i'm going to do now is try and pattern make it kind of like this so this is just your normal dress block and then obviously extending it out and um, setting it down and out at the bottom to get the sort of like flow that I want. And also just kind of extending it up into like a tube-like shape around the neck and then putting it on the bias and then I'll cut the front and the back the same. I'm just gonna ignore all the darts that are usually in here so that it has a very uh, drapey sort of silhouette. So we're gonna try that and see how it looks. I made a little bit of a pattern for the dress but I'm honestly not a big fan of it, to be honest. Um, I think it'd be okay if I could do it on the bias, but because the dress is so long, and it also has this, like, long neck piece on it, so I've got all of this length plus the whole maxi dress length, and my model is, like, quite tall. It, you, you just cannot fit it on the diagonal of the fabric. So... I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that yet. I'll show you. Let's just ignore this little bit for a moment because, so what I'm going to do here is sew these two bits. Obviously, I've only done a front, as you can see. So that would be sewn to the back and then it will kind of just droop on the neck. But that's obviously not going to work right now while it has, isn't sewn to anything. Oh, okay, cool. So then I've just put the cage back on over top of it, which also obviously isn't fully finished yet. But I did go ahead and do the bottom hip one and the uh, top one. It kind of just looks like it's just there, which I'm not really the biggest fan of. I wanted more volume in the bottom and then maybe a little bit tighter in the body, only because when this is pushed up tight against it, it starts wrinkling underneath, which I don't really like that much. I'd rather it be like more like this, like flush underneath that part and then flow out from the bottom of the cage part down. But I think that I might have to wait until Monday when I'm at TAFE to get more of this done because right now I honestly don't have enough space, like I don't have enough table space to be pattern making such a large item. 
I've done heaps of work today anyway, so I think that I might just... I think I might go ahead and do the last piece of boning onto the bottom of the cage and then uh, finish off the top and bottom edges. Oh, as well. I was being to my lecture, I realised what I should do with the top and I realised that I... <laughs> she was just like, Holly, are you having one of those days where you don't remember things because obviously, because this is pretty obvious. I'm just going to wrap it around myself because it's easier. Um, okay, so... Around the top parts, we've got, I was like, oh, I can't like push the boning out, right? So I'm just going to push the casing. It's a little bit hard to do. So the casing here, it is sewn here, but I can push it down here until the boning pops out the top and then trim the boning. And then I'll pull this back over the top of it and sew it down like that. So it's fully clean across the top. I might try to have them a tiny bit above, but we'll see what happens after I do the bottom one. Um, because if I have it a bit above on the top, I'll want to do the same on the bottom. But I'm not sure if I'll have enough length of boning at the bottom. Especially because some of them are looking quite short. Especially like this one at the top. This one is ac accidentally got really short. And some of the ones around the bottom are looking a bit different lengths. So we'll see... I made sure as well that when I did this one here, I actually made it stick out from the body a bit more. So the waist one is like quite tight and then these ones go out, giving you this like shape underneath. And then I'm going to do the same with the ones that go down here as well. So this all kind of shapes and then goes out and gives a hip shape. So I'm just going to continue on with that and make it kind of wide. I finally have a toile of the full dress. Now I completely changed my pattern from what I was talking about the other day. Um, and when I'm back at TAFE I can go through that and show you guys the pattern because it looks completely different. But pretty much what I did, so I only did a half toile and then I've pinned the neck on. So the neck is like, it's really quite long piece so it all flops and like will kind of like fold down. Um, I haven't sewn that one on. Obviously, so it's kind of flopping a bit weird because my mannequin also doesn't have a neck. But so then we have this here. So this is the full dress. Oh, okay, we can see all my mess. It's like the full dress. So what I did was go around and I added princess seams so that we had no darts anymore. So all of the lines are very like intentional lines. The lines in the dress down here also match up with the lines in the actual caging. So then I've done the same thing down the back. Obviously this is just a twirl so the seams are very messy. I am going to do French seams so that they don't look so scruffy. And then the side seams, so then those go down to the bottom. And then I added the flare into here so these get very like... I really don't have enough hands. They get very wide at the bottom. So then when you, hopefully when you walk, it'll flow really nicely because of the way that I've done that at the bottom. This is um a little bit big for my mannequin. My mannequin has a very small waist. Um, so obviously these lines here um, is where we've put all of our darts into so that there's no darts, but we still have all of the shaping that we need. So it's nice and tight on the body. Then gone ahead and done this sample. Now I will show you guys exactly how I did it when I end up doing it onto my proper dress. So I added some beads. So I'm not exactly sure what sort of beading I'm gonna do yet. So I did these ones, which are just like little beads everywhere. And then I did this one here, which like is like a dangly one. That could be really cool to have some like movement, especially if I did them like long on the bottom of the dress. So when she walks like, It'll like move around. I also then did these ones which are all like together in a line. But I think I like this one and this one the best. I'm going to ask my lecturers what they think I should do with that. Because that's also going to take a very long time to do onto the whole dress. Sense 
pencils with freezer paper you just want to print whatever you want out i've printed out the 336 and eden i've printed them out in multiple sizes so i have a bunch of variations so they can go from larger to uh, smaller when they go up the dress you then want to grab your freezer paper which looks like this so if you look on the inside of it it's got a shiny sort of texture but on the outside it just looks like baking paper now i'm pretty sure you can get this in most craft stores or even your super like local supermarket so you then want to so this is what you end up with so you'll take this piece here and you'll put this on top of it and it's you can see through it so you just trace it out and then grab a, a stanley knife or a pair of like sharp scissors and just go around it and cut it all out so then this piece becomes your stencil so that sticky stuff that's on the back will actually iron onto your fabric okay, with this piece is you just take this and iron it onto your fabric just lightly you paint in between it and then you peel it off straight away and it works as a perfect stencil you get super clean lines okay and at tafe the other day i after i cut all of this fabric out which i showed you i went ahead and sewed it all up so um excuse my horribly messy room but it's looking really good it has this sort of um like volume and like flow that i actually wanted from the bottom of it i'm pretty happy with that this is mannequin a little bit weird she's got a bit of a funny shape so mine at tape actually has a bit of a tighter waist but it's looking good so my lovely mother has let me rearrange the living room for this so i moved the couch out of the way and rolled up the rug and moved the coffee table so i've just put down some of my pattern making paper and i've laid my dress on top of that it doesn't exactly lay out flat obviously because of all the contouring and the body shape so we're just gonna have to work with that i then also have put the ironing board up here so i'm first off going to i also then have all of my stencils over here so i think what i'm going to do is start from the smaller ones and do these up the top i might just pin them on for now and then work down and have them bigger at the bottom so i'm just going to pin them on move them to the ironing board and iron them on move them back down here and paint them once they're painted i'll leave them for a little while to dry and leave the stencils to dry obviously and then i'll have to come back and do it again because i can't move the dress around while it's wet so um yeah it might take a while but i think my system will work and we'll just give it a go Okay, so we had a major issue with the fact that it went extremely patchy here. And over here where it looks like it's solid, we flip it over. It's stuck to my cardboard. Which um, is horrible. So I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to get that off yet. It only did it to that one and that one. Um, I did a couple other ones, but they've ended up a little bit... Um, like patchy as well so my new setup is kind of like this i'm going to paint on top of the calico now instead of cardboard so i tried one like that they're not as perfect like my lines aren't as perfect but it's a much better color so yep we're going to try that now and see how it goes Okay, so it's the next day and I have gone ahead and I used some warm water and detergent and it got all of the cardboard off the back of my font, which is perfect. So now I'm just going ahead and repainting it because it is quite a lot lighter than all of my other parts. And then I'm just going to go around and touch up the other parts of all of these, like these bits that are a little bit lighter. And same as like on this one, there's a bit of a line in it. So I'm just going to go around and touch up all of the paint and then lay that out to dry. Okay, so the colour on the cage was looking a bit like 
murky and grey and just a bit gross. So after I finish off the edges, I just folded them over and sewed them. A lot of them are really short, really hard to sew. So I kind of just had to do this. It's not the neatest thing, but it'll do for now. Um, like, I mean, not for now. It, like, it'll, it'll have to do because I can't exactly redo it. So I have just got my screen printing ink and I'm just going over the outside and painting it. It does look a little bit funny over like these parts on the stitching but I think as a whole and you look at it from like further back it just looks a lot cleaner. I also sewed on the last one on the back the center back piece so then these ones will go behind kind of like like that so those ones are going to clip on behind it in like a straight line like that. Um, I also have a whole bunch left over so I'm thinking I might add some to the shoulders but I'm not sure about that just yet and also bought some just glass beads from spotlight um I bought some like really quite small ones and I've got my embroidery hoop so I've already started here with some beads I'm just going to do a bit of like a drop shadow with the beads on the back of this onto all of the parts that I've painted it's going to take a very long time honestly and you can't even see it that well on camera, but I think it just adds a little bit more dimension and like texture to the garment. <laughs> Definitely about to run out of beads, but we are down to the last one. Finally. It's literally bucketing down with rain, so I hope that's not too loud. I've shown this a million times. It's still not finished. Okay, now I'm just sewing on these little snaps on the inside. So on these parts here, I've got a snap. And same on the other side. I'm going to fold that over like this. So I'll snap on top. So then it'll close and look completely like flush. So that's what I'm doing now. So I decided that... I wanted to try and do a bit of an arm piece that kind of like went from the corset and curved around like this but it was not working, it looked really bad so instead I decided to do this so I can try and put it over my jumper so I made this little just like ring okay, <laughs> well that was great um, so anyway, I made this like ring so it's like an arm cuff and then I've cut this piece here which is a bit bigger and that's going to go around the outside here like that so when her arm is down, she's got these like, and I'll put it further up so that she'll have like a ring that kind of pokes out from the arm. I just wanted to do that because I wanted a little bit more dimension. In my original drawing, I had it kind of going up like this, but I thought that that looked kind of like, like an alien costume. So I wasn't, oh my God, the rain is so loud. Um, yeah, I thought that looked kind of like an alien costume. So I really didn't want to do that. hurricane okay and then I have a little bit of explaining to do because I haven't filmed anything about the dress in quite a while so I got a little bit stressed about getting it done so also I filmed it I did actually film a little bit of tape but it was so loud tape you couldn't hear what I was talking about anyway so I think the last I showed was once I just sewn the dress together and started painting it so what I did was I finished the edges here on the sleeves um, just by doing like a normal binding. So I cut a bias strip and um, bound the sleeve holes, mainly just so that I had the thick, the same sort of like dimension happening. Um, I then did a double turn over hem on the top. Oh my God. Okay, on the top here, I just did a double turn hem and I did the same on the bottom of the dress. I then added the closure. So, here we go, I'll come a bit closer. So what I did was I used snap tape, which, okay, which was a very interesting process. Um, I thought that it would be far too heavy for the dress, but I put it on the mannequin and pinned it on that way. I haven't done them all up. Um, so, 
it actually hangs very well with the dress there's no pulling or rippling in it um which is definitely a better way to do it than like um uh, laying it out or like having the tape pulled tight because then it would start to like buckle and look horrible um but I was getting very stressed so I went ahead and did that I think a couple of days ago I did that just before I started the beading because I wanted to get all of that done before I beaded it so that it would stop fraying um so yeah I then have a bunch of clips of beading now the beading took me oh that's the inside the beading took me honestly hours <laughs> beading honestly took me so long and I think it's because I had very very small beads as you can see so I just would kind of come in string a bunch of them along and then go back in so you can see they're all kind of like in like sections now this was definitely the easiest way to do it especially because the fabric is so sheer it was going to rip holes so um I am like very happy with how it turned out I kind of wish that I'd done more of these maybe like one more up here on the front because I feel like the front is looking a little bit um, like down the whole center front there isn't really any but the back it looks very d like dense the front's looking a bit plain but I also have the corset so I think it should be fine I don't know I always just pick apart my designs once they're finished but I also then have um, I'm also quite happy with how the collar looks. I think on a real person, that's going to look very cool. Yeah, I will check back in when that is finished. Hopefully, it is soon. It kind of worked. It's really hard to sew through, and it looks a bit messy, but that part will be, like, under the armpit. Hmm. I think it looks cool. There we go. Two of them. I think they look cool, and now I'm going to paint them.